Hey guys, and here we are back with another video and I hope you are all okay on that side of the screen. And today to take a look at this budget 4K camera and we'll show you in just a few moments all the tests that I made with it. Now, in terms of the camera itself, as I said, it's a budget camera, so we cannot expect any miracles in terms of build quality. This is a glossy plastic. Uh, it doesn't look bad, but when we touch it, it feels like that cheap plastic. Nothing wrong with it, but just to say that. In terms of accessories, it comes with a few interesting accessories, being the most interesting, in my opinion, probably the external microphone, which I will share with you the results in just a few moments. And when we have an external microphone, it means that we have a microphone input, which gives us the freedom. If we don't want to use that one, we can use another one. And we will talk about that in just a few moments as well. We also have a wide angle lens and a pouch, a second battery. And regarding the battery each one of them has 2500 million powers and this camera is really battery efficient i imagine that the processor here doesn't push too much of the battery because it lasts for a lot of time so this is a good thing when we look at the navigation in terms of the buttons and by the way the camera when we turn it on makes this noise and it will automatically turn on when we flip the screen but as i was saying in terms of buttons we will find the menu button and also a play button right over here navigation and then power on and off and the display on the screen on the top we'll have the mode which we can change from photo to video and then uh, also the dedicated photo button by the way in terms of photography as you can see this camcorder doesn't have a image stabilization so pic for pictures it's a bit difficult to get it right if we use a tripod, there's no problem, but if we use handheld, uh, it will be a little bit difficult. Also on the uh, zoom side, this is a digital zoom, so we will lose a lot of image quality, both on video and also on uh, uh, picture quality, as you guys can see on some images that I took. So I would avoid using the digital uh, zoom, not only on this camera, but on any device. In terms of the screen, it is a touch screen. So we can use the navigation buttons or we can use our finger to touch the screen and then navigate. Now, in terms of the menu itself, it is a basic menu. It has the most common settings. I would point out two of them, one of which is the maximum resolution that we can record, which is 2880 by 2160 at 24 frames per second. But I would suggest using the 1080 on this particular camera at 64 frames per second and in my opinion we will have the best balance right over here and the second thing that i would point out from the menu is one of the things that i love on any camera which is time lapse so if you enjoy time lapses uh, there is an option so that we can create a few time lapses and that being said let's move on for the test that i made both on the video side and also on the audio side so right now i'm recording with the camera itself no lens and no microphone uh, so that we can see and i'm using the exact same position the exact same tripod that i use on my dslr with a 24 millimeter uh, lens and what i can say is that this is a little bit closer than the 24 mil regarding sounds we will make some comparisons right now i'm using the wide angle lens add-on and also the included external microphone which is connected right now so that we can see a difference now in terms of the lens we can see roughly we compare to another DSLR lens, we are talking about 18 mil, more or less, so a lot wider than what we had before on the same position. And now still using the wide angle lens, but on the microphone side, I'm using this lapel microphone, which is a cheap lapel microphone, but it should improve the sound. Just to test out the sound input of this camera, and just for comparison, uh, I'm recording also with my Yeti microphone that you can see on the picture right over here, just so that we have a quick comparison in terms of sound quality. Silent nights recalling you, a souvenir of what it could be. Pieces of my mind are yours. I forgot the present missing.
Then conclusion, guys, in my opinion, the image is not bad in one scenario, which is when we are further away from the object. But when we are close to an object, like a vlogging camera, I cannot suggest this camera. And as you can see, the camera has a few difficulties to, to focus when we are close to it. Uh, it looks like it focuses on the background and not on our face. Obviously, it doesn't have face detection. On the other hand, if we are doing something on our holidays, on our day-to-day -day usage of a camcorder, because not everyone needs to point a camera at, our, at his face, uh, we can just use it without any issues. I did record the landscapes and I did record a few other things and I have no issues in recommending this camera if we want to use it for holidays and so on and so forth. One more thing that I did really enjoy is the microphone input which is really useful especially if we use a microphone such as lapel microphone which will give us a lot more quality. And one more thing that I did enjoy is that we have the option to use a SD card plus a micro SD card. So we have two uh, options right over here for storage. Now things that I did like the less in this particular case that we don't have an image stabilization right over here and that will make us a tough operation if we don't have a tripod and if we shake a lot. If we don't shake then we will go by but if we shake a lot then it's a bit more difficult. And that's about it guys. Hopefully this video was helpful in some way and if it was don't forget that usual thumbs up. My name is Roberto George and as always I'll see you guys on the next one.